Hey everyone, look who's back, it's been a while. I'm sorry I've not been too active on YouTube, I ran out of mugs to use in my opening scene. I'm just kidding, it's been a wild 2021, super busy, but we made it to 2022 and I promised myself I'd get back into the video making and hopefully continue providing useful content so we can all grow and learn together. While brainstorming ideas for new videos in the last few months, it dawned on me that I've not made a video about who I am, uh, what I do, or where I learned about property. And I've wondered to myself um, whether people might want to know about my property story. Wait a minute, who are you? So that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing in this video. <laughs> My property journey actually started when I was quite young. My dad was a bricklayer by trade and eventually ran his own building company. So when I was growing up, he'd take me on site kind of whenever there was an opportunity to do so and I'd help out during school holidays. My main role was to pass in the hammer or measuring tape when he needed it. Over the years, I've been to so many building sites, I started learning about buildings, how they're constructed, the materials and processes involved, timeframes, costs, and I even learned to use some power tools when I was a bit older. I was a pretty average student at school, so I didn't do too bad, but I didn't get the best grades either. As a lot of you from the UK will know, they got to a point where I needed to decide what I wanted to do after my GCSEs. My parents encouraged me to continue with A-levels and go to university after, but since we were a foreign family and didn't really know about the education system too well, we didn't realize how much this would impact my future decisions. I ended up doing my A-levels based on subjects I enjoyed, but didn't know this would impact the types of university courses that would be available to me until I actually started doing my applications. On top of this, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life, let alone make a choice that would impact my future for the next 50 years. After some long discussions with the family, my dad decided it would be good to get into engineering because I was decent at maths, uh, it was good money, and I didn't have to do physical labor. And that's exactly what I did. I applied to five universities to do civil engineering and on A-level results day, I got through clearing into my second choice at Liverpool University. I started the course in 2012, but I soon realized I was way out of my depth in terms of fundamental knowledge um, that I needed in order to do well. And that's when it hit me. The next three years were going to be me constantly saying, the fuck is that? Despite not enjoying the course, I loved universities. I met some amazing people and had some great experiences that I will never forget. In 2015, I graduated with a 2-2 and I decided I needed a break. So I got a job with a local developer helping out on a building site whilst I slowly got my driver's license. I didn't know where I was going at this stage, but I just knew I didn't really want to be an engineer. And after investing three years into the studying a bit, I felt a bit lost. At the beginning of 2016, I left the building site and I was approached by a local estate agent who'd asked if I'd be interested in becoming a sales negotiator. I had no clue what it was all about, but after some research, I thought I'd give it a go, especially as I didn't have any income at that time. At first, it was great. I worked with some really good people, got to dress up in a suit, so I looked and felt good, and I was learning new things every day. I soon realized that the promise of making loads of money by selling houses was more of a dream rather than reality. But the morning pep talks and the motivational posters kept me going. Do it! Make your dreams come true! Throughout my time at this agency, I made a handful of sales, so I didn't make much commission, and with a high staff turnover, the workplace became more and more toxic as the months went by. Eventually, my office was shut down, so I jumped ship to a different agency. In 2017, I started at a new agency as a senior negotiator in a really affluent area. And I thought to myself, if I work super hard, I'll make loads of money because property here was really expensive. We had a great team here, but the corporate structure of the company made you feel really crap about yourself whenever you didn't hit your targets. So eventually kind of self-esteem um, flew out the window along with motivation and any drive I had. Ain't nobody got time for that. I was there for about a year, working super long hours, and I did learn a lot about property, uh, the sales process, negotiating deals, property appraisals, but deep down, I knew that I wasn't a salesperson, so this wasn't actually the job for me. I decided I need to find a new, more intellectual challenge, and I thought to myself that it was definitely time for a career change. 
Since we were in constant contact with surveyors, I got to speak to a few of them about what they do and what's needed to become one. They all mentioned that I needed either five years of property experience or a degree that's accredited by the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors. By 2018, I became pretty miserable because of work, so I decided to just quit without having anything new lined up. I looked around for trainee positions, but it seemed as if they were either really hard to find or I just wasn't looking in the right places. After a couple of months, I managed to find a job as a trainee surveyor for a family uh, run startup valuation practice. This is where things really started to pick up in my property knowledge as I learned about the different types of residential and commercial valuations, uh, property measurement, I got to read a lot of legal documents, go out to site and see different properties, um, study case law and even use a bit of math which I really enjoy. It was here that I started to learn about the intricacies of becoming a chartered surveyor and since I finally found a job I enjoyed, I looked more and more into it. I realized that since my bachelor's degree in engineering wasn't accredited by the uh, Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors, I needed to go back to university. After some digging, I found out that the fastest route to chartership for, for me personally was by doing a master's degree. In 2019, after a year and a few months, I was offered a job at a different surveying practice. I started my part-time master's degree in real estate at the same time while I was pretty much working full time. I started to learn the theory behind the knowledge and experience I already had and it was all very mind-blowing because I started to understand why things were done in a certain way. In 2021, I had finally reached the moment where I had five years of relevant property experience and I could become an associate member of the RICS. For this to happen, I needed to write a 10,000 word submission of my property experience and apply it to the competencies set out by the RICS. And this is why 2021 was a very crazy year for me. From January 2021, I was working full time, preparing for my exams, researching and writing my dissertation and working on my first professional qualification. So something had to slip and unfortunately it had to be YouTube. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no, no! But I'm happy to announce that I have now been awarded my master's degree in real estate with distinction and I did get my professional associate qualification from the RICS. This year, I am working on becoming chartered, which is the final step, but I will keep you updated on how that's going throughout the year. So that's my property journey. And to summarize, I am still working for the company I started at in 2019, and I specialize in leasehold reform matters, but I also undertake a range of residential valuations. I hope this has been interesting. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with my new videos. I'd also love to hear your property stories, so definitely put them down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all at my next video.